Hello and welcome to Byju's IAS. Let's take up the daily quiz for today. The first question: Which of the following statements are correct? Lighthouses are administered by the Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways. The ministry wants to develop them as hubs of tourism under the Sagar Mala project. Both the statements are correct. Option C is the right answer. See, this question was taken up because we have a related article in the Hindu. The article helps us understand that the lighthouses in the country and the light ships are administered under the Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways. Under the ministry, we have a subordinate office known as the Directorate General of Lighthouses and Light Ships, which is responsible for administering the lighthouses and the light ships of the country. These are used to promote safe navigation along India's coastline by guiding the ships that are passing around India. According to the article, the Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways has proposed to develop the existing lighthouses in order to exploit their tourist potential. The lighthouses that exist along the coastline of the country, they are present at vantage locations and they offer panoramic views of the nearby areas. So the ministry has proposed a public private partnership model to develop around 5 old lighthouses in Odisha under the Sagar Mala project. One of the projects that will be taken up under the initiative would be the Falls Point Lighthouse that you can see in this image over here which is located along the Kendrapara coast. This lighthouse happens to be India's oldest functional lighthouse which was built during the colonial era. Now let's look at the second question. It is the only sanctuary in Andhra Pradesh with a population of Asian elephants. From 1983 to 1986, a sizable number of elephants began their journey from the forests of Hosur Dharmapuri in Tamil Nadu and Anekal Bannergatta in Karnataka to seek alternative homes in other regions. Around 39 elephants moved to the forest of Andhra Pradesh, a state which had no elephants for almost 200 years. This led the government to set up the sanctuary in 1990. This description refers to which protected area? Krishna Wildlife Sanctuary, Koringa Wildlife Sanctuary, Kambalakonda Wildlife Sanctuary, Kaudinya Wildlife Sanctuary. The correct answer is option D. The Kaudinya Wildlife Sanctuary is a part of the Eastern Ghats and located at the tri junction of Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. This protected area happens to be the only habitat in Andhra Pradesh that has a population of Asian elephants. These elephants migrated from the neighboring ecosystems in Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. This question has been asked because we have an article in the Hindu that makes a reference to the Kaudinya Wildlife Sanctuary. Let's look at the third question. The term shapahari recently seen in news refers to a new variety of high yield rice genetically engineered by the Indian Council of Agricultural Research, a web based platform for paying advanced taxes, a certification scheme for aquaculture products, a new organic fertilizer rich in potash meant for plantation crops. The correct answer is option C. It is a new certification scheme that has been introduced for aquaculture products in India. According to this article in the Hindu, the center is going to certify the shrimp farms in the country and it has come out with a certification scheme known as shapahari. It is basically a Sanskrit word which means superior quality of fishery products that is suitable for human consumption. See India is one of the major exporters of frozen seafood in the world amongst india's exports of frozen seafood shrimp happens to be the biggest item and the major markets for indian shrimp would be the united states followed by china southeast asia and european countries but these markets have very strict hygiene and safety standards and of late a lot of food safety concerns have emerged over the consignment of indian shrimps and several consignments have been rejected in us and europe after those countries detected antibiotic resistance in these shrimps it basically meant that some of the indian producers were using antibiotics to speed up the growth phase of the shrimp but the consumption of such antibiotic laced shrimps can result in antibiotic resistance and hence these markets 
take very strict action against those consignments and they even reject them to prevent these incidents from happening the government of india is coming out with a quality benchmark and the marine products exports development authority has introduced a quality certification program known as shaphari it is basically a certification scheme for aquaculture products and it is based upon the technical guidelines that have been issued by the united nations food and agriculture organization with regard to certifying aquaculture products in line with these un standards india has launched a national residue control program under which food safety issues in farm produce is being addressed and the shaphari scheme in particular will provide for quality certification to the hatcheries that supply the shrimp seeds and it will also provide for quality certification for the shrimp farms in order to encourage those hatcheries and shrimp farms which adopt the best safety practices in order to help produce high quality antibiotic free shrimp products now let's look at the fourth question twice glacier sometimes referred to as the doomsday glacier is located in himalayas arctic antarctica alps the correct answer is option c the twice glacier can be found in the antarctic region this question was taken up because we have an article in the indian express which explains the concerns surrounding the doomsday glacier or the twice glacier seen in this map over here which is located in the antarctic region see since many years the twice glacier has been a cause of concern for climate scientists because of its high potential to directly contribute to global sea level rise as a result of climate change this glacier has been melting since several decades and this glacier alone contains enough water to contribute to a global sea level rise of 0.5 meters if it were to melt completely at the current rate of melting it is contributing around 4% to global sea level rise and a new study has come out known as the gothenburg study which has established that the glacier is melting at a much faster rate than it was earlier predicted now let's look at a question from the 2016 films paper with reference to prepackaged items in india it is mandatory to the manufacturer to put which of the following information on the main label as per the food safety and standards packaging and labeling regulations of 2011 list of ingredients including additives nutrition information recommendations if any made by the medical profession about the possibility of any allergic reactions vegetarian or non vegetarian amongst the given statements the third one is incorrect so option c is the right answer as per the 2011 regulations of the fssai pre packaged food items should mandatorily contain the list of ingredients including additives nutritional information and whether the product is vegetarian or non vegetarian however information regarding allergic reactions is not mandatory now coming to the fact of the day let's talk about the gati initiative which has been launched by the department of science and technology in collaboration with the british council see gati stands for gender advancement through transforming institutions studies around the world have shown that in the stem field that is in science technology engineering medicine and mathematics there exists a huge gender disparity in our higher education institutions it has been found that even in developed nations in the stem domain very few women are found and hence to bring about gender equality in the stem domain united kingdom had started an initiative known as the athena swan charter under this charter uk has achieved tremendous success in increasing enrollment recruitment and retention of women in the stem field of studies in higher education due to the success of the athena swan charter of uk it has become very popular and several countries around the world are adopting this model even india's department of science and technology has adopted the initiative and it has launched gati which stands for gender advancement through transforming institutions this initiative has been taken up by the department of science and tech in collaboration with the british council and its primary aim is to establish a gender equality framework in higher education institutions especially in the stem domain 
under this initiative higher education institutions are directed to adopt gender equality principles and implement a smart action plan which stands for specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound action plan for promoting a systemic and cultural transformation in the higher education institutions in order to enable greater support for gender diversity and gender inclusion by creating an enabling environment for women in the stem domain so with this let's conclude our discussion for today thanks for watching